Today we're going to fix the 3.3 volt pin problem that can prevent your Western Digital white label drives from working in some computers. When you shuck or remove the internal disk from a Western Digital Easy Store external drive, you'll find either a red label or a white label internal disk. In a previously published video, I detailed the steps needed to remove the disk from the enclosure non-destructively, so I won't go through the steps here. Just remember that you're voiding your warranty by removing the disk from its enclosure. In the past, Western Digital was using red label drives exclusively, but at the time of creating this video, the white label drives are more common. The symptom of the problem is that white labels simply won't be recognized when placed into computers using certain power supplies. Here I have a white label 8 terabyte drive which has a model number of WD80EMAZ. What I'll do is simply hook it up by connecting the power and the data cables. I'll simply take one of the SATA power connectors coming from the power supply, align it to the drive's pins, and connect it. Then I'll take a SATA data cable, which is already plugged into the motherboard, and connect it to the back of the disk. Now let's power up the machine. I'll go directly into the BIOS and we can see that by going to the storage information, the Western Digital Drive doesn't appear at all, and thus it wouldn't be seen in Windows either. I can see the two SSD drives that I already have in my machine, but the new white label drive isn't recognized. This tells us that this isn't a problem inherent to the operating system, but a hardware problem. The cause is a new SATA specification which includes the ability to disable power to the hard disk. When you look at the SATA connections on the back of your hard drive, you have the narrow data connector and the wider power connector. On the power side, there are 15 pins that make contact with your power supply. It's the third pin that delivers a 3.3 volt signal that disables the drive. What we need to do is prevent that third pin from making contact with the power cable. I'm going to show you two solutions. The first solution involves a piece of capped on tape to cover that third pin. I'll take a piece of backing paper from a sheet of labels and place the tape onto it. Then I'll take a piece of cardboard and place it underneath. My goal here is to cut a thin strip of tape, enough to cover that third pin, so I'll take a razor and gently slice off a strip of tape. As you can see, it's yellowish in color. It's a special type of non-conductive tape that's stable at both low and high temperatures. Next, I'll bring in the hard drive, locate that third pin, and gently apply the tape. I highly recommend that you use an ESD wrist strap while you're doing this, as you're touching the contacts of the drive. Now the tape is too long for the pin, so I'll snip off the excess with some scissors. Let's go back to our computer, and as you can see, while I have the Kapton tape on the third pin, I'll connect the power cable which will slip right over the tape, and then I'll connect the data cable. Let's boot up the PC. Returning to the storage information in the BIOS, we can see that the Western Digital Drive is indeed being recognized. And if you boot into Windows or whichever operating system you're using, you will see the drive and be able to partition it and format it. Let's talk about solution two. This one involves a SATA to Molex power adapter, which goes between the hard drive and the power supply. Now the one I have has both a power adapter and a data connector, so it's a two-in-one adapter, but all you really need is the power piece of it. They do sell just the SATA to Molex adapter, separate from the data cable. All you need to do is connect the adapter to a Molex plug coming from your power supply and the other end to the hard disk. These adapters effectively bypass pin 3 on the SATA power connector. In my case, with this 2-in-1 adapter, I need to connect the data piece to one of the SATA data ports on the motherboard, which is this red cable shown here. Once that's connected, I just plug in both the power and data connector to the hard drive at the same time. Before I do that, though, I'll confirm that I've removed the Kapton tape from the third pin, since we won't need that for this solution.
Then I can power on the computer. Once again, I've entered the BIOS, and we can see that the Western Digital Drive is being recognized on the SATA port to which I connected. Continuing to boot into Windows will allow you to see the disk and use it as normal. There are many power supplies which will work just fine with the white label drives, and my QNAP NAS devices work fine with them as well. But if you ever run across a situation where the drives don't power up, you can use one of these methods that I've covered, using the Kapton tape or the SATA to Molex adapter to prevent any voltage to travel to pin 3 of the disk, allowing you to use the white label Western Digital Discs as internal drives. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.